are going to be going over the uh, eight weeks to wellness corporate challenge. We will give a couple minutes of uh, courtesy window here to get doctors on the call. Dr. Dane is going to be taking over with Dr. Eric in just a second. But this is for the offices in our test group. And uh, one of the things I want to reiterate at the top of this call is that this group and the reason you've been selected uh, to be a part of this is that we want major feedback. Um, let us know what you love about it, an idea you have to make it better, and something that you might foresee as being a challenge. If we can work it out now, what we are trying to create is not just a really good airtight bucket, um, but we want you know a swimming pool size bucket so we can start pouring companies, employees, and the general community in your area into this program and have no problems with it. So we want to build this for volume. We want to build it for massive growth in your community. And that happens now. So please take these calls seriously. Whenever you come across a challenge or a better idea, get it to us sooner than later. And what we can do is rectify that right away or plus one of these good ideas, make it a little better so that when we start pouring these companies, corporations into it, it just flows so easily. And we can dump the million people we want to get through this program into here and really make a change in your community um, and in people's health in, in a big number. So. I'm excited. The idea of you know people being able to do this online and getting engaged without actually stepping into your office initially is eventually going to create more new patients for chiropractic offices. Or maybe you've been doing talks, they've been a new patient, and now they want to do the next best thing, and they bring it in. Whether this is the front product or the back end product, there's going to be a major advantage to having this done online and done for you. We want it to be the very best product out there forever. So um, we're willing to upgrade. Just want you to know we're very open to your input. That's why we're putting these calls together. So that is the purpose, um, not to prove how great we are, but to prove that we as chiropractors are the best profession. So help us in doing that, please, and uh, give us some feedback. So from here, if it's OK, I'm going to turn this over to Dane and Dr. Eric and um, let you guys run it from here. Cool. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate it. Hey, Celica, if uh, you don't mind, uh, just uh, I'm going to uh, pull up every once in a while, make it every five minutes, five, ten minutes, and just uh, field some questions. So if you keep an eye out for that, because I don't see on my um, panel here where I can see the questions. They can put them in the chat box, but if you just kind of be a heads up for the questions, we'll pause every once in a while so we can field some questions. Okay, sounds good. All right, thank you. Uh, well, welcome everybody. We're going to be uh, recording this call, so uh, it'll be available to you later to study. We're going to go over some good hands-on information. You know, uh, Dr. Eric and I have been uh, working on this website for quite some time now, and uh, we're starting to get your feedback. And uh, I would say we're probably at about 95% completion. Um, the last 5% is really because we're doing a beta uh, challenge here with the offices that are participating. Uh, we really need this 5% to really smooth out this website get your feedback, make any last minute changes so that when we go to the marketplace, just like with eight weeks to wellness, you know, we feel confident in our product. There's nothing like this out there on the market. And I'm telling you, we have just a, a huge opportunity to go out there and make a big impact collectively, not as individual uh, practitioners or not uh, feeling like we're an island un unto ourselves, uh, but literally uh, as a family going there with a good product and a good message. And uh, we have uh, economical leverage here in these corporations because they're just getting clobbered with uh, health insurance rates. So, uh, so we're really excited about the, uh, the process of what we're going through. You know, we want to uh, make sure that you're going through the program. The reason that we, uh, we selected 25 offices is because we figured that you guys were the most excited. You would get your staff involved. Uh, we've built in accountability into this uh, program and this procedure. So we can see those of you that are participating and those of you that aren't. We can see who's answering the weekly questions. And I can tell you now, having uh, 42 eight weeks to wellness distributors, and I, and I absolutely know it's no different for, for Brad with the uh, corporate skeleton key, you know, those doctors that are most engaged and most engaged in learning and doing what we're teaching are the ones that are finding success. And I know in our practice, you know, it's, uh, it's very, uh, I don't want to say easy, but it, it comes easy when you've done this long enough and you know exactly how to react to a patient, how to respond with a wellness score, when you go out to a corporation, how to do a lunch and learn, how to talk to an insurance broker. But that didn't come overnight. That come, came with practice and really kind of putting the work and the time in. So, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to build this corporate brand out there in the marketplace, but it's certainly not going to be without work. 
and we want uh, we want these calls to be roll up your sleeves, really get down to business, understand how this eight weeks to wellness challenge is going to work out there in the corporate environment. So um, what I'd like to do is before we kind of jump in, I wanted to review uh, the actual presentation. You can see the way that we've set this up, Dr. Eric and I, we've set this up so that you can go into a corporation and actually give the eight weeks to wellness orientation if you choose to do that. Or you can direct people to the initial web website once they register and they can go through the orientation that we put together. So I briefly wanted to kind of just go through the initial eight weeks to wellness uh, orientation uh, PowerPoint. We've actually created it in two formats, a PowerPoint format or also a Prezi. I, I've been using Prezi for quite some time now and I really like it because it's an internet based uh, presentation software. So if you have the link for the orientation video, all you got to do, pull up your Prezi account, uh, you know, open that, uh, open that presentation and get started giving it. So as long as they have internet access and a projector, uh, you're good to go. You don't need to carry anything with you and that's why I like Prezi. So um, before we get started, what I'd like to do is maybe again just pull up, see if there's any questions, any initial questions that we can address right off the bat. Maybe get your feedback a little bit of what you think about the first, I think we're in week three, is that right, Eric? Yep, week three. Yeah, we're in week three. So I'd love to get your feedback on what you think about the videos going through it, uh, what you think about the questions and the homework and the action steps. Um, so Selica, I think that you probably have the uh, attendance list. And is there a way that you can unmute people so that they can literally ask a question if they want, or would you rather just uh, read the question and we can go from there? Uh, whatever you like. I believe I can uh, unmute. Okay. Um, normally we, we can unmute. So guys, if you have a question, if you can hit that little hand button so you raise your hand and then uh, Sela can, uh, can unmute you and that way everybody can hear the question uh, that you want to ask or maybe even the comment. It doesn't even have to be a question. Maybe it's a comment on some of the material that you've gone through. We, we again, we've put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into creating this and I would absolutely love to hear your feedback or what you think so far. And, uh, and don't be shy, you know, if you want to, uh, you know, we have thick skin, so if you want to tell us something that you feel we can improve upon in the, in the uh, challenge, please let us know. All right, I have uh, Dr. Barry Lieberman. Dr. Lieberman? Barry, can you hear us? He, is he may not have a microphone, Salika. Barry, if you want to ask your question, just write it in the uh, chat box or into the question box. And uh, we'll just move on to the next person, Selica. OK. Dr. Leslie Vick. Hey, Dr. Vick. Can you hear me? Sure can. Okay, mine's more of a, a comment. Um, I'd love to see the videos um, to be able to go full screen. Uh, there's not any way w going through some of the modules that I could um, look at in full screen, basically. Okay, that's a, that's that's a great point. And uh, Eric, do you, do you know if uh, if Jim can uh, program that in? I, I don't think that that's a hard uh, thing to do. No, we get we can do it. What what happened uh, with YouTube is it's actually um, just a little bit of snippet of code. But what we will lose from that is the um, the TV view, I call it. You know, instead of having the little banner running underneath with the um, the, the scroll banner on the, underneath, that'll come back on because that allows you to pop it open. We have that eliminated right now just to kind of uh, keep keep people from skipping forward. But it's definitely something we can look into. Yeah, I just have a I have a 13 inch laptop, so when you have it like on a small TV, it's it's literally like it's the size of a credit card. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. So some okay. of the exercise stuff is kind of, it's a little bit difficult and I couldn't imagine someone who's a little bit more elderly um, trying to guess what's going on. Okay, now which videos are we talking? Are we talking the, um, the, the intro videos or in the, the, the fitness videos? Uh, I was just the, the fitness videos that I was going through. The fitness, ones. Yeah, the fitness ones might be a little bit challenging because that's actually they're embedded inside a PDF. Uh, but we'll see what we can do. It's good, good. I like that though. Okay. Thanks, Leslie. Anything else, Selica? Anybody else? Not at the moment. Cool. Okay. So, so I'll keep going. And uh, what, what I'd like to do is, in, in our office, um, you know, we, uh, we and, and Brad really teaches this in this program, it's a lot easier to generate uh, warm leads uh, to get into a, a corporate program and also into our eight weeks to wellness program in our office. So we try to meet people where they are and then bring them to where we want them to be. 
So for example, just to give you an example of how this works in real life practice, I had a patient refer to me uh, earlier, uh, it was actually later last week, um, he came in for his report of findings uh, on Monday, and uh, he, he came in, his wife referred him in, um, he had uh, high blood pressure, he had gone to his doctor, 49 years old, uh, had a lot of central pedal obesity, a lot of belly fat, you know, was completely out of shape, sat all day long, and he was just perfect for the program, because not only, you know, when I took his x-rays, was he subluxated at C5 and in his sacrum and pelvis, um, but he certainly was deconditioned and out of shape. And when we did his uh, functional movement screen and when we did his waist to hip ratio, which was one, meaning that his belly was as big as his hips, um, his waist circumference was 43 inches, his body fat was 29%. Um, you know, that's a warm lead who's going to be absolutely perfect for the program. So he came in not really knowing what he wanted. He didn't have back pain, mm -hmm. didn't have headaches, didn't have neck pain. He just came in because his wife told him to come in. And that's kind of the way that we're really moving uh, and progressing forward to, to teach you guys how to really take this uh, corporate challenge and get it out into the community is to develop your relationships, people who know you and trust you, who can really put you in front of people where you can kind of show them this program. But to really be able to show them a program, you have to understand how it works. So what I'd like to do is maybe take you through the initial orientation and just take you through some of the slides so you have a good understanding of that. So let me just... Uh, pop this up here and we'll start from the beginning. So this, again, this will be available as a, as a Prezi presentation or will be available uh, also as a, a PowerPoint presentation. Um, I, we do, in our office, we do uh, two eight weeks to wellness orientations monthly. So we do uh, the first and third Thursday of the month, we do an eight weeks to wellness orientation where people come. We generally have anywhere between five and 15 people. Um, and again, that's a way for them to come and get information on the program. And then from there, we sign them up for eight weeks to wellness. Uh, we also do a WOW in our, uh, we call it a wellness orientation workshop, which is our new patient class. So almost every single new patient either is coming to an eight weeks to wellness orientation based on recommendations from the doctor at the exam, or they're coming to our new patient class. If they're not an eight weeks to wellness candidate, we don't perceive them to be an eight weeks to wellness candidate. So I would say 90 to 95% of our new patients are educated on what a wellness lifestyle looks like. And again, I truly believe that people can't do something they don't understand. And people are living in an environment where they're not supported as far as their health is concerned. So when they leave their office, they, they simply don't know the right choices to make. Um, and, and I'm sure you see this in your practice as well. So I'm really excited about being able to take this eight weeks to wellness orientation as a group and really start to uh, make this come alive in our communities and all really kind of communicating the same message. So again, I'm, uh, some of the uh, initial uh, slides are just to educate the, the public and these corporations how much we're spending on uh, health care. And uh, again, you know, we're spending $8,300 per person, but that's not necessarily coming out of our pocket. It's coming out of that corporation's pocket. It's coming out of our government and the taxpayer base. So this is a huge issue, and the, the reason it doesn't hit home, and I think if it did hit home, just like taxing cigarettes or taxing soda, uh, we'd make some changes is that we're not writing that check every single week, let's say, for two, three hundred dollars for our health care expenses. It's coming from someone else writing the check, but ultimately we're the ones paying, and that's what I want to communicate to the, uh, to the public and to these corporations, that this money is being spent and it's got to come from somewhere. Um, you know, again, this is a slide just kind of going over, you know, how, how we're spending more than any other country on health care, and yet, you know, we're one of the, the, the worst or least healthy countries in the world. And again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but these are just some general intro slides. Um, you know, this is to show people what healthcare is becoming in America, which is, you know, you go see your doctor, you have a symptom, you get put on a drug. And before you know it, you're seeing four different doctors for four different chronic diseases. They're all putting you on know, one or two medications. And this was a patient that we had come into our office that was literally on 13 different prescription medications and thought that was completely normal. And so where have we gotten to in, in the United States where we can put a human being on 13 different prescription medications and think that that's going to get that person healthy? Okay? And this is the cost for her prescription drugs per month that she, not, not she, but that her health care uh, insurance and ultimately, you know, we were, we were uh, spending. These are the top 10 uh, uh, prescribed drugs in the United States right now. And, and again, the reason I show this slide is just to show them that a lot of these uh, lifestyle drugs uh, are treating, you know, symptomatic problems that can be addressed through lifestyle. So if you look at Lipitor, if you look at Nexium, Plavix, you know, these are all to treat asthma, all to treat diseases that are chronic diseases. These are infectious diseases, like we're prescribing an antibiotic 
to cure an infectious disease. These are chronic lifestyle diseases that are being caused by people's poor lifestyle choices. Okay, and just again to go over some slides, I love this EPIC study, guys. When you go into a corporation, you know, they, they're, they're all about outcomes. They're all about, you know, how much you're going to save me. And so, you know, teaching them the eight weeks smallest lifestyle is really going to promote four behaviors, you know, not smoking, exercising 3.5 hours a week, keeping your BMI under an obese BMI, not even, not even overweight. We just want our, we want our, our employees, we want our, our patients to be under obese, and then eating a healthy diet. And, and the outcomes um, that, 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 you know, that that generates is huge, you know, preventing diabetes, preventing heart attack, preventing strokes. Think about, you know, just the opportunity to prevent these chronic diseases and how much that would save, not just in terms of economics, but also in terms of the productivity of the employees that are participating in these behaviors. You know, then we talk about uh, our children, you know. If you take a look, you know, the, the basically where we were with obesity in the 1970s, early 1970s, that only really about 5%, 5 to 6% of our children age 2 through 19 were obese, and now you know, in the, in, in the year 2003, 2006, and it's probably even higher now, we're seeing obesity rates of 12 to 17 percent. So again, my, my point with this slide is that your children, they don't do what you say, they do what you do, and anybody who's a parent knows that. So we've got to model good behavior. So if you're not willing to have good behavior and good health habits for yourself, at least do it for your children so that you can teach them how to prevent these chronic diseases like diabetes. I love this slide, guys. We have this as a poster literally in our exam room. You know, this is metabolic syndrome, and if you read the bottom uh, slide here, it says that people with metabolic syndrome are at significantly increased risk for developing diabetes, cardiovascular disease, as well as increased mortality from all causes. And metabolic syndrome is diagnosed by having three of five biomarkers, and that is your waist circumference for a man over 40 or for women over 35. So again, think about this guy who came in to me last week. His, his waist circumference was 43 inches. Uh, his uh, triglycerides, I didn't see his blood work, but if you have triglycerides over 150, if you have an HDL cholesterol under 40, the good cholesterol under 40 for a man or under 50 for a woman, and if you have a blood pressure over 130 or uh, over 85 and a blood glucose over 100. And that makes you, if you have three of those five criteria, it gives you metabolic syndrome. And I really think that we can leverage this in corporations. I think this is really, if we can target this as a group to go out there and teach people what metabolic syndrome is, you're, t you're nine times more likely to get diabetes if you have metabolic syndrome, okay? Nine times. You're four more times likely to have a heart attack or a stroke if you have metabolic syndrome. And 40%, get, check this out, guys, 40% of people over 40 have metabolic syndrome. And metabolic syndrome doesn't have necessarily have a set criteria of symptoms. And, you know, I just want to stop right there, and Brad, feel free to jump in on this one. Um, you know, so many times I'm going out there and, and I, you know, I, I go to seminars and I hear chiropractors basically, you know, talking that we should really meet people where we are, where they are, I mean. In other words, if they come in, we should really meet them where they are and give them what they want. In other words, you know, if they have back pain or have coming in for headaches, you know, we, we absolutely should give them what they want, which is pain relief. And I agree with that. You know, but if, I want you to think about something. If somebody were to go to their doctor, let's say, and they had back pain, okay, and the doctor, you know, diagnosed them and sent them for studies, and they went for an MRI, and they had metastatic bone cancer, okay, would the doctor just treat them for their back pain, or would the doctor probably treat them for their cancer, which is their true problem, you know? And so my point uh, in this is that people are going to come to you, 40% of the population that, that comes to you over 40 has metabolic syndrome. And if you're not diagnosing that and letting them know, you're letting them walk out of the, the door with a disease that may end their life early, not may, probably will end their life early and you know, have them spend gobs of money. So I think this is a huge um, you know, thing that we can leverage out there. Can, can you hear me, Dean? I sure can. So you know, one of the things I, I would definitely agree and just piggyback on that is um, it's something I teach all the time is that patients come into chiropractic offices with their expectations too low. So you're, you're right on the money with this. A lot of times they come in with these low expectations. We do have to meet them where they're at, but there absolutely needs to be a process we move them through to better their expectations for themselves because I've yet to meet a new patient that comes in 
with great expectations of what's possible. It's just about the paint here or something there. It's very limited, and it becomes our job to really look at a health problem, not a back problem. I totally agree. And, and sometimes, guys, you got to step up and not be their friend, but be their doctor, and maybe love them a little bit more than they love themselves, and get them to raise the standards of the way they're living their life. You know, that's what a true coach uh, does. They get you to raise your standards and play at a different level, and that's what we're going to do. I love this slide. Um, Dr. Eric loves this slide too. You know, are you de-evolving? You know, show people. You know, what's down the road for them if they don't change and, and clean up their act? You know, this great slide. Uh, you know, my, 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 my slide, I love this slide, what gets measured gets managed, and it basically sets up, you know, the, the wellness score and doing biometric testing. I love this quote, we'll all be judged by one thing, the results. You know, so physiology is really what speaks the loudest. You know, how's your blood pressures? How your, how's your lab work? You know, what's your weight? What's your BMI? You know, what do your x-rays look like? That's the true nature of a human being, not just the way they feel. And then we talk about changing habits, and all habits have three components, a why, a how, and a what. You know, the attitude, the skill, and the knowledge. And what we try to educate them on is that we can give them the skill and the knowledge. That in the eight weeks to wellness challenge, we're going to give them all the information. We're going to teach them how to do the program. But what we can't give them is the attitude, the why. And I think so many people, like Brad said, have low expectations. They have a bad attitude. You know, they don't care whether they're healthy or not. You know, and so what they have to do and what you have to do for them is help them leverage what their big why is. And one of the best ways I found to do this is to ask them what's important in your life. And almost everybody is going to say what? My children, my family, my spouse. The children, by the way, always come before the spouse, which I find interesting. You know, uh, and then maybe the job and the dog and you know, the mother and the mother-in-law. You know, I don't know what's important in your life, guys, but I can tell you one thing. If you focus on what's important, I know for me, my children are extremely important to me, and I want to be around as long as humanly possible. I want to see them grow up and have kids. I want to be an active part of their life. I love to golf and ski and hang out and travel the world with Brad. I want to do that as long as humanly possible. And the only way to do that is to take care of myself. You know, you wouldn't beat the shit out of your, excuse my language, beat the hell out of your car and expect for it to run the rest of your life. So why are you beating the heck out of your body, not putting good fuel in, not changing the tires, not cleaning it up every once in a while and giving it a good wash and expecting that thing to last forever? It just doesn't work that way. So I love this definition of wellness. I'm not going to read it, guys, but you know I'll send this uh, PowerPoint out, guys, so that you have it. Uh, but then we go into the three main causes of chronic disease. You know, and I ask this question. I think it's a very important question. I, when I'm giving the orientation, I teach via the Socratic method. I ask questions. That's how you're going to engage people, right? So one of the questions I ask when I get to this slide is I'll say, somebody raise their hand and tell me something that you're doing or something that you're not doing that's moving you towards illness or chronic disease, okay? And they'll all say the same thing. Well, you don't eat well. Uh, I'm not exercising. I have too much stress. You know, I smoke. You know, they're all going to say that I don't get enough sleep. And basically, all of those things that they're doing that are either driving them towards sickness or driving them away from health, they're going to fit into three categories. How they're moving, how they're thinking, and how they're eating, right? So we go over that. You know, we go over the physical stress in their body. That's things like accidents. And that's, I always tell them that, listen, there's two things in life. There's things you have control over, and there's things that you don't. And in this program, we're going to focus on what you have control over. So if you had an accident, or your mom had, you know, uh, you know some incurable disease genetically, you know, that you're worried about, you know, you, you can't do anything about those things. In the past is the past. Your genetics are your genetics. We can't do anything about that. But we have a lot of control over how we're eating, how we're moving, and how we're thinking, and that's what we're going to focus on in the pro uh, program. Okay. Then we go into the elements of what they're going to do on the Eight Weeks to Wellness Challenge, and basically tell them that we've set up the actual uh, program to address those three areas of their health, the biochemical health, the emotional health, and the structural health. And the way that we're going to do that is through nutrition, meditation, massage, fitness, and chiropractic. Now let me stop, stop right there, because when we do the orientations in our office, obviously massage and chiropractic is, is, is required. They have to do that to do the program in our office. These are not required, so if you look at the challenge manual, you'll see that uh, in the challenge manual where it says chiropractic and explains what chiropractic is, it says recommended. You'll see where it says massage and explains the value of massage, it says recommended. So these are recommended services, but here's the cool thing. You're going in, you're talking to 50 people, giving them the orientation, you're passionate and you're talking about chiropractic and massage, 
you think they're going to go to somebody else's office to get chiropractic or you think they're going to come to your office? And again, this is why I'm so excited about this because not only is this a way to get in and actually you know, drive this challenge in the corporation, but it's going to be a huge leverage to get these people and develop relationships so that you can get them into your practice. Okay? This is what we go through. This is the time commitment that they're going to, um, you know, this says in the office, but basically really what it is is this is the time commitment that they're going to give to the challenge itself. Um, we, we use this in our office to basically go through what they're doing. You know, a 30 or 60 minutes massage, two one-hour sessions with our trainer, and, and uh, now that I'm looking at this, I'm going to make myself a note because I need to change this for the challenge because obviously the session with the trainer is going to be two one-hour sessions that they're doing. Uh, they're actually doing their exercises through the 8 Weeks to Wellness Challenge website. Two chiropractic adjustments. You know, I'll put in there recommended a meditation. They're actually going to be doing their meditation 10 minutes daily, so I'll need to change that. So these are all the things that they'll need to do. We tell them that we want 5% of their waking hours about you know, 3.5 to 5 hours a week that they'll need to dedicate to this program. So it roughly comes out to be about 45 minutes a day that they're going to be dedicating to the program. And I'm telling you that the investment of their time is going to be one of the most important and powerful things they've ever done. Because if you think about what people are doing, you know, being on Facebook, being on the Internet, watching TV, you know, going to sporting events, those are all great things, but they're not going to have nearly the impact on their life that doing a program like this would have. All right, so then we, uh, we go into the nutritional part, guys, and I'm not going to spend a lot on this. I would, I would encourage you, if you have not read the, uh, watched the orientation, that you do that. So we just go over having a healthy relationship. We go over with, you know, the two paths that are birds in the woods, and most people take the easy path, which is eating crap, not preparing their meals, and we want them to take a different path. We go over the fact that food is really for energy. It's the sustained energy, and energy is defined as the capacity to do work. So you have to ask yourself when you're eating a meal, is this going to energize my body or is this going to rob me of uh, energy? We go over the fact that when you spill milk, clean it up. You know, if you go out and you have a bad meal, you know, you're always only one meal from cleaning up your act and getting back on track. So our rule is 80-20. 80% of the time, we want you eating good and eating the way that we teach you. 20% of the time, you know, I went out for my son's birthday last night. I, I promise you, you know, we had a good time. You know, I, I didn't eat uh, alfalfa sprouts, right? We, didn't, we had birthday cake. It was a fun night. But guess what? I woke up today and I got right back on track with my diet, right? And then we also talk about, you know, playing the movie to the end of the reel. You know, what do you want your life to be 20 years from now? What you're putting in your mouth is a huge part of that. We go over the fact that food is three macronutrients, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. We talk about how many calories are in a carbohydrate in a gram, in a protein, in a fat. You know, what, what they're going to be eating on this program, which is 30 grams of carbohydrates per meal, 20 grams of proteins per meal, 10 grams of fat. You know, what the serving size is. We want them using their hands. The size of your fist is your carbohydrate serving. So if they're going to have rice, it's the size of their fist. If they're going to have, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, and again, this isn't paleo, so let's say that they're going to have some sort of a high fiber bread, it better be the size of their fist. You know, protein is going to be the size of their palms. If they're having chicken breasts or, a, you know, a piece of uh, fish, it's got to be the size of the palm of the hand, same thickness, right? And then the size of their fat, like a salad dressing, is going to be the size of their thumb. Right, we go over what a protein. Guys, you'd be surprised how thick people are. They don't understand how to read a food label. What's a protein? What's a carb? What's a fat? So that's where the education comes in. We talk about some of the important things with car carbohydrates, which is no high fructose corn syrup, you know, reducing fatty proteins, not eating trans fats or partially hydrogenated oils. We teach them how to read a food label, how it's listed from most concentration to least concentration. Right. So again, we show them a food label and we teach them how to read that. And all this is in the orientation video, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. And then we go through basically the guidelines of what we want them doing, how we want them eating five meals a day. Two of them are going to consist of the meal replacement shakes. They'll be able to order Ultrameal online. Uh, Ultrameal is a Metagenics product, guys. I take this product every single day. I just put one in the fridge. It's awesome. It's quick. It's convenient. I went to the gym today. I mixed up an Ultrameal. I put a little... Um, uh, uh, raspberries, mixed that up in there and blended that up and I had that before I went to the gym today because it was quick, it was easy, it's, it's, uh, there's no uh, sugar in it, it has the fructose concentration of about an apple. You know, and there's a difference guys between fructose and high fructose corn syrup. Some people see the ultra meal and they say, you know, what's, you know, there's fructose in there. Well there's fructose in an apple and raspberries and blueberries. There's a difference between that and high fructose corn syrup. So the two supplements that we recommend on the program 
of the uh, ultra meal and the uh, uh, ultra EPA DHA, which is the the high concentration of uh, omega threes. Okay, so again, we just kind of go through the uh, re nutritional recommendations for the program. We go over what the macronutrient choices are, and by the way, all of this is in the manual, which I'll show you in just a second that they can print out online. Um, so we tell them what are the proteins we want them eating and the serving size. What are the fats? What are the carbohydrates? Some people are just guys like, tell me what to eat, and we tell them. We give them recipes. They're in, in the challenge. As part of the challenge in the nutritional section, every single week, we've given them a breakfast and a dinner recipe. So they can just print it up as a PDF and use that recipe. So know that you have that as a resource. We go over what a typical day looks like in their meal planning. Breakfast, ultra meal, lunch, ultra meal, dinner. Or maybe it's uh, for breakfast they're doing an ultra meal, and then they're doing a snack, maybe a half an apple and a handful of nuts. And these are things that you're going to have to guide people with. We talk about the ultra meal. We talk about the fish oils. We talk about their journal. We give them a log, guys. We want them journaling. So remember, uh, you're not going to have the control over these people that we have over them when, when they're in our office. When they come in to get their adjustments, if they're an eight weeks to wellness patient, it's a knee-jerk reaction for me. Where's your manual? Because if they haven't brought in their manual, they're not logging. And people that log and fill out their manual get twice the results that people that don't. So you're not going to have that opportunity except at week four when you go in. And what, what I would do is say, listen, I'm, we're going to be back in here week four. I need you guys filling out your logs and your manuals. I'll be asking them for it. You know, manage their expectations. You know, make sure that they're following through, guys, because I'm telling you what, if they get results, they're going to tell other people. They're going to come into your office. Okay? We talk about massage not being a luxury but being a necessity, especially if you're in a company, guys, where they're sitting all day. You know, go up and start palpating their traps. You know, palpate their levator scapula, palpate their lower, lower back. You know, look at their rounded shoulders and teach them about how uh, massage is an important thing to really break up soft tissue adhesions. We talk about meditation, you know. We talk about, you know, how you just have 60,000 thoughts a day, and the majority of people's thoughts are worrisome thoughts, negative thoughts, angry thoughts. So you are what you think about, so we teach them to clear their mind with meditation or prayer. You know, we always say, we don't care what you call it. We want you to quiet your mind and stop thinking. People think too much, right? And so most of the problems or the solutions to the problems that you're going to have are when you shut your mind up long enough where you can listen to you know, the universe, or listen to Mother Nature, or listen to God, because I don't know about you guys, but some of the solutions to my problems have come in a deep sleep when I've woken up in the middle of the night, and the solution to that problem that I was dwelling on for the past couple of days is right there, and it wasn't when I was thinking, you know, it was when I got still, and the universe provided the answer to me, and that's what meditation is all about. We talk about exercise, you know, the best time to begin exercise is sometime between tomorrow and yesterday, that's right now. We talk about the general fitness skills that we're teaching in the program. You know, endurance, strength, stamina, flexibility, speed, power, agility, accuracy, balance, and coordination. So we want to teach them that, that this is not just about strength training. It's not just about being a good spinner, you know, and having cardiovascular endurance. We're trying to develop all of the different aspects of fitness. Okay? We talk about how most weight loss pro programs don't incorporate things that build muscle and that muscle burns seven times more calorie than, calories than fat. So this is very important that people know they've got to train to put muscle on their body and increase their metabolism. Muscle is one of the most important tissues you can keep on your body, guys, and that's why I work out so much because, you know, as we get older, we get frail. You know, and, and people, and, and, and Dr. Oz says this, people don't die of, you know, a, a disease. They die of frailty, the frailty that the disease creates in their body. So the osteoporosis, the heart disease, it makes people more sedentary. When they become more sedentary, they can't put muscle on their body. So we teach them how we want them to do the cardio training. That when they go off for a walk, it may be great, but it's not great for their cardiovascular system because they're not ramping their heart rate up and down. And the heart and the cardiovascular system is a muscle. And the only way to strengthen this muscle is by stressing, right? So we want to get their heart rate up and then down and then up and then down. We teach that in the videos on the move well. We teach that the chain breaks at the weakest link, right? We teach them about functional movements. You know, we don't care how much they bench press. But we do care that they can squat on the toilet every day and get up without their knees and back hurting. Okay? We talk about the return on investment that's three to one because they're burning calories not only while they're working out, but that muscle they're putting on their body is going to increase their metabolism. We teach them about heart rate monitors so they can know where their heart rate is when they do their interval training. We teach them about chiropractic, guys. What a great opportunity to go in based on a wellness program and then teach them what chiropractic is, what subluxation is, that we live our life through our nervous system, right? 
that the, the, the communication system from the brain to the body runs through the spinal cord and through the spine. This is a great opportunity to educate them what you do uh, on chiropractic. We teach them the pitfalls. You know, we know the speed bumps. We've been running this program, guys, for 10 years. I know what works and what doesn't. I know where people are going to falter. So why not, why not point out those failure paths ahead of times so that they don't go down them? All right? And then for us, we've created a what's next, you know, that they need to read their challenge manual, that they need to do their measurements. We've created that email, guys, that hopefully that, you, um, that you've seen that's going to take them through that quick start guide so that they can get jump right from this orientation right into the program. So reading their manual, getting their measurements, scheduling the appointments in, in your office if necessary, right? Getting familiar with the challenge website, getting a buddy or an accountability partner, you know, who's going to hold them count, accountable to make sure that they're doing? M remove all temptations that may sabotage the program in their kitchen. Like for me, it would be ice cream. You know, if I want to be, be successful at any type of detox or if I'm doing eight weeks of wellness, you better believe there better be chocolate ice cream just better not be in the house because that's something that's going to sabotage my program, right? So we teach them, again, those pitfalls. And I think we're pretty much wrapped up here. Eric, you want to add anything? Can you guys hear me? Yep. Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me, Dane? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Brad, can you, or Brad, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Yeah, okay. I got you now. Hey, Eric, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, buddy. Okay. There we go. I'm going to go back to the challenge thing, but I just didn't know if you wanted to add anything, Eric, that I missed. No, I'm good. I think, what's that? All right. I don't think Eric can hear me, guys. So I'm just going to keep going. So um, basically, that's the orientation. And Celica, would you mind just seeing if there's any questions uh, about the orientation or how it's delivered? Um, sure. Dr. Uh, Lieberman actually had a few comments on um, the program and the videos. Uh, so if you want me to read those, I can. Um, he has about three comments. Um, okay, good. On... Go ahead, Celica. Oh, okay. Um, he was mentioning that uh, there is a dead space in the videos where anyone who is watching just has to wait. Uh, it makes the videos drag. He says it makes the videos too long. Um, and this is a lot to ask of busy people. Have we ever sat and watched the videos after they were made? Is there a plan to edit the videos to take out the dead space? I didn't. I sound like I'm having a hard time hearing you. Would you mind just speaking up because I you're you're uh, you're you're just real low. Oh, okay. Sorry, I had you guys on speaker. So. Um, he's just mentioning how there is a lot of uh, dead space in the videos. So I don't know if it's a, maybe a connection problem for him, or um, and he's asking if we plan to edit any of the videos to take to take out the dead space. I know we've watched all the videos, Eric, and I don't remember a lot of dead space in the weekly videos. Do you? No. I mean, at the most, I would see some buffering sometimes on my connection, but that was about it. And buffering guys usually have little things scrolling in the middle of the screen, kind of telling you it's just trying to catch. That's kind of one of the things with YouTube and uh, you know broadcasting and stuff that way. Yeah, when That's I watched, it, I didn't see any dead space when I watched it. Okay, next, Selga. So his next comment was. Um, there are too many start points. I download this, read that. There needs to be a single start point. It needs to be a linear process. Uh, the start time is very time intensive. OK. Um. Uh, and then he had a comment on nutrition. Um, and he, he, he mentioned how canola oil is, we should uh, remove it from the recommended list. Uh, because it's largely a genetically modified crop today. Okay, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll address the uh, the entry points too. And uh, Dane, I actually spoke on that this morning. Um, you know, one of the things we're trying to do right now is mess with the design uh, layout, so it is more of a step by step. And I like that we're linear uh, process. And what we have to resort to right now, what we have currently, um, is just from a standpoint of trying to get the ability to. Uh, get the logic, we call it, in the back end. So in other words, when you click on week one, you answer three questions, you go to the next week. 
we were actually having to really create that because no one really had that created yet where you blocked yourself from one area, couldn't get to the next. So that's kind of what you're seeing right now is kind of the creature of what we had. Now that we had that, that's what I was, we were speaking again with Dane this morning about, um, just revamping uh, almost three different entry models to test out which one people like. So uh, I appreciate that feedback by Dr. Lieberman. All right, cool. So, um, and I agree, it's, it needs to be like a recipe, step one, step two, step three. And, um, and you know, this is why we need your feedback, guys. So we, yep. we appreciate the fact that you're going through it. Um, all right, so if there's, if there's no other questions, that's kind of what I wanted to cover today is the, uh, is the orientation, how this will play out, and just answer any questions, get feedback on how the program's going. You know, you should be in week three, and, and uh, you know, the one thing that we did do is, uh, and I think we've added this recently, is we did do the pre-training videos. Um, so again, the, the first place that we'd want them to start, obviously, is the orientation. Uh, and after they watch the orientation, it's to jump right into the pre-training videos. So, uh, which, which will teach them how to use the fitness builder, the PDFs that we've created for the workouts, you know, what, what constitutes a, a beginner, intermediate, or advanced workout, um, you know, where they are as far as uh, their ability level, whether they're beginner, intermediate, advanced, you know, for the thinking better, how they're going to do their, medita their meditations. So, if, you, if you've uh, clicked on any of the weeks, you'll see that the uh, resources we've embedded right into the actual Think Better. So, the, the resource for the actual Think Better is going to be the meditation. So for that week, they'll have a weekly meditation. Each week is going to be a little bit different. So this is week one meditation with Teresa. Every week, the picture's a little bit different. That's the resource for the actual uh, Think Better. Like I said, the resource for the Eat Better is the actual um, recipes that we've created. So every week has different recipes, and we try to do one breakfast and one lunch or dinner recipe. So that's something that we've uh, created for the Eating Better resource. Let me see if I can pop this up. There it is right there. So you'll see that there's the breakfast for week one. They can download that and create that or just you know, put it, have it on their smartphone as they're making that. And then obviously for the uh, Move Better, we have had the actual uh, PDFs of the workouts. So we explain on there on the pre-training video how we want them to do their mobility prep, which is their, basically their stretching or their dynamic part of their workout before they do their actual strength training workout. Now, we also talk about them doing 20 minutes of cardio three times a week in an interval training fashion where they're ramping the heart rate uh, up and down, which is why we want them to have a heart rate monitor. So again, it's important to know what the tenets of the uh, eating better portion of the program, the tenets of what's you know, trying to reduce their glycemic index and their, their uh, sugars in their diet for the, eat, for the eating better, making sure they're eating good protein, making sure they're getting good healthy fats in their diet. And then obviously for the thinking better, making sure that they're doing their meditations so and they're following up on the resources. All right. And then the other thing that you probably noticed is that every week, uh, and we've uh, recently put this in and you're, you're probably answering them, is that every single week is going to have questions. And what happens is when they answer these questions, like for Move Better, the, obviously the answers to the questions are embedded in the videos for that week. So they'll have to watch the video to really learn the answer to the question. And then they'll uh, obviously you know, answer the question uh, for all three, eat better, move better, think better. And then they'll be, once that's completed, they'll then know that, that that will get sent to the HR director or whoever the team captain is, whoever's holding that employee accountable. Uh, and they'll, they'll then be able to move on to week two. So this is something that we've built in because a lot of people are asking, well, how are we going to make this uh, such that there's accountability so that people are actually following through? And again, if you know Big Brother's watching, you know that somebody's going to get an email if you didn't. Just like, just like I told you guys, we know, you know which of you are doing it and which of you aren't. It's probably the ones that are on this webinar are the people that are doing it. The ones that, that aren't the, on the webinar are probably the ones that, that aren't doing it. So we, you know, we've always said going forward um, that you know we want you to be trained, certified. Uh, we want to follow up to make sure that you're, uh, you know, you're you're a good representation of what we want to see there out there in the corporations. So that, that's basically all I, all I have. If, unless there's any other comments or questions, Celica, we can, uh, we can wrap this up. OK. Uh, yeah, I have a few more, actually, uh, from Dr. Laura Willis. Uh, she wants to know if we should be waiting until we've completed the eight weeks ourselves uh, to take it to company. I, I, I'm going to answer that. I think unequivocally yes, only because, and, and Laura, I appreciate the honesty on that, is just because. Once you own it, it's easy to promote it, to sell it, to teach it. 
if we're just still getting familiar with it, it becomes the I don't know answers that you might lose a very important um, you know, client in your area, and that's really what they're going to be are your clients. This is going to be a relationship for the next 10 to 20 years, big picture. I'd say let's just wait another six weeks. You'll have this thing under your belt and ready to rock and roll. So um, patience on this one will help you land the big fish. At this point, you know, another 40 days, we'll be through it. You'll fully own it. Uh, just even listening to Dane um, as he does this, I, I take notes on all of this stuff. One of the things he said that I will definitely be using when I explain this <clears throat> is that, you know, the best time to work out is somewhere between, you know, tomorrow and yesterday. It's called right now, you know, today. Let's do it. So those are the kinds of things that as we go through this process, we are all going to be learning it. And uh, it's obviously his brainchild, so we'll learn the most. But those are the kinds of things I, I'm really excited to move through it, have full ownership, and then be able to present it. So um, without stepping on toes, I just wanted to jump on that and say thank you for asking the question um, because the patience at this point, it's done. We just need to work through the process. Then you'll fully own it, and you can answer the questions without needing to call us from the parking lot and run back in with the answer. You'll be ready to do it yourself. That's a good point, Brad, and just to follow that up, you know, guys, remember that our four-part model is track believers, build the model, demonstrate results, and then build your brand. So we, we do want to build that brand and get this brand out into corporations, but we better make sure that we have ownership over it. So um, I, I think we're kind of still at, uh, you know, somewhere between building the model and demonstrating results. And then I also wanted to real quick before we take the next question, guys, show you this is relatively new, um, is that we have our eight weeks to wellness challenge manual. So again, you can click on this and the challenge manual will actually come up so that you can view it online. Um, but we also separated out uh, the log portion of the manual. So if you take a look, the, the employee can pull this up, they can read through it online like that. But let's say that in the back they want to print up that, they want to print up uh, the log and not the whole book. They can actually go and just print up the log and I'll show you that in just a second when this comes up. But if you see here, here's their eight weeks on this fitness journal. So what you're going to want to have them do is, is print this up, and this is what you're going to go over with them that they're going to be filling out when you go back at week four and week eight. This is a way to kind of uh, you know, familiarize yourself with what they're doing every day. So you're going to really need to have ownership and understand how this log works, but it's all 56 days of their eight-week program. So you have their morning meal, their snack, and their snack may be an ultra meal. It may be a snack. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm totally fine with them doing a snack. I, I just think... And I, I don't think, I know that it's very hard for people to sit down to five meals a day. So giving them an ultra meal shake is going to ensure that they don't skip a meal and, you know, that they don't have to prepare a meal. So uh, the midday meal, their, their midday snack, uh, how much water did they drink that day? What type of exercise did they do that day? Did they do their meditation? Uh, how many minutes? And then did they take their fish oil and what other supplements they took? So it's very easy to fill out. We ask them to fill it out kind of ahead of time for their meal planning. Um, so that's just a resource that, that you'll have available. And then the other resource I wanted to point out real quick that I think is a really awesome tool um, is the uh, heart, heart rate, rate calculator. And let me, uh, whoop, somehow I clicked on that. Let me go back here for a sec. Okay. So I'm going to uh, click on this and show you how this works, guys. What we want to do is we want them, remember with their cardio, we want them doing about 20 minutes uh, three times a week, but we want them doing it in a uh, fashion where they're ramping their heart rate up and down. And this heart rate calculator, what it does is it calculates exactly where they should be every single minute. So if I pull this up, what I, what you're going to do is you put the name in, and then they're going to put their age in, and it's automatically going to calculate where they should be every single minute. Let's say they're on their treadmill or on their bike, or they're out taking a walk. You know where their heart rate needs to be every single minute, and that'll load up in just a second. But those are the three resources that we've created. Uh, we may, you know, down the road, we may come up with another resource that we want to put into the manual based on your suggestions. So let's just do this for me. I'm 43 years old. If I click outside the box, they'll print that up, and then there's the 20 minutes. So where, this is where we want their heart rate to be every single minute so they know where their intensity level, either their speed or their resistance should be on that piece of cardio, whether they're out running. So hopefully that makes sense. So uh, those are the resources in, in, the, uh, in the program that we've created so far for the, for the uh, participants. Next question, Silk? Um, Robert Steelman, uh, he works with Dr. Botello. 
and uh, he said, can any food sensitivities or intolerance be addressed, especially with the recipe suggestions? Can it? Sure. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, you know, be addressed in the manual. I don't know, really know the substance of the question that he's asking. Okay. I, I guess he just wants um, any food sensitivities or intolerances uh, addressed. Let's just say something like gluten, because that's probably the most common sensitivity right. nowadays. Can, can maybe address it from that standpoint? Absolutely. You know, again, running this program for 10 years, guys, you know, I would love people to eat paleo. Um, but if you, if you try to take somebody who's been eating McDonald's and eating processed food and you try to switch them to a, a gluten-free, dairy-free diet, you're going to lose them right from the start. I'm telling you right now. So meet them where they are and bring them to where you want them to be. And in the, the challenge, we're, we're not totally dairy-free, we're not totally grain-free, although I try to be. I don't know about you guys, I'm not 100%, um, but you know, I'm, I'm probably 80 90%. So if somebody has a sensitivity, absolutely. But you know, again, it's not your job, uh, unless they're coming into your office, it's not the job, I guess, of the challenge uh, to really address every individual's need. Um, if they if they want it, their individual needs addressed, they should come into your office and then find out what their food sensitivities are. They're not, in other words, they're not. They're, you know, on the program, it's it's not really des designed to address individuals. It's designed to address the masses. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, Elka? Um, nope. Not at the moment. All right. Awesome. Uh, Eric, do you want to say anything? Wrapping up. I think he had to jet. He had some uh, eight weeks to wellness new patients coming in. I got a message here. Okay, cool. Uh, Brad, you want to wrap up with anything? No, I think it's a great call. And, you know, just to, to kind of uh, follow up on that last question, Dane is the ultimate resource on this thing because it is his program. So um, I would suffice to say, and I've, I know him really well, um, this guy's a man of his word. He stands behind everything he does. He just lives it. So those kinds of questions, as they come in with the detailed strokes, by all means, he'll be your resource, and uh, he welcomes it. So don't, you know, I wouldn't be afraid or, or um, hesitant on any of that. Step into these problems. Call him as the resource. We'll all become better physicians as a result of it, but also um, the results will be there for the patient. So if you get into a, a web of, of things you're not sure of, by all means, uh, if it's on the marketing or promotion of the product side, that's going to be where I, I really focus. If it's on the clinical side, you'll have Eric and Dane, and I just know him as a person. Um, he stands behind everything he does, and he also makes himself available. He can help you with that. So um, I'm looking forward to getting myself into some problems, only because I know he'll have answers that, that will get me out, and I'll learn in the process. So step into those challenges. That's part of why we kept this group small. You know, we have a ton of docs that wanted to do it, but we limited it to 25. Um, that's that's not a big group to get personal attention. Let them know if you need it. So, so just, you know, specifically on that question of dietary sensitivities, when the details come in or maybe, you know, the doc that asked it knows the scenario in specific as to, to what it was, you can call Dane and, and get those answers one-on-one. -on -one. And, guys, just, just to, to follow up on that, Brad, because that's a really good point, know that, you know, uh, you know, I'm in full-time practice. I have two children. I have a wife. You know, I'm a really busy individual like Brad, and I will do everything that I can to take your concerns and comments and questions and incorporate them into this. But you know, the whole point of this is that we're not developing 50 different programs. We're developing one really good program. And so, you know, if if the concern meets muster and we really feel that it's a part, uh, you know, a uh, clinical essential, we'll we'll incorporate it. Um, but you know, I have 10 years in experience running this program. And, and I'm more than happy to take feedback. It just has to be something logistically that works um, to incorporate this because we don't want it to be another three years before we get this program out to the masses. So, you know, just, um, you know, be patient with us. That's all I'm saying. All right. So uh, without further ado, guys, uh, we will, uh, I guess, Selick, we have our next call in a couple weeks? Uh, yes. Okay, and so what we'll do is we'll get you out the uh, next support call, which will, will be in a couple weeks, along with the um, with the recording of, of this uh, of this video or this webinar that we did. And uh, guys, please feel free to uh, email me those clinical questions. My email is really easy. It's Dr. Dane D R D A N E at www.com. So if you have any questions, comments, um, you know, we we made notes of the comments that you have today. But please keep them coming uh, because we meet uh, Eric and I meet with our web designer twice a week. 
Uh, Brad and I are meeting now. We, we already have things in the works uh, for marketing of how we're going to approach HR directors and insurance brokers and uh, really get this program in the lap so that they can understand it. So you know, just know that these things are in the work. They're coming down the pike, and as we, we release them, that we'll, we'll let you know what's going on. So have a great afternoon, and uh, thanks for your time, guys.